Hey guys, Jake, Jacob Back Knives. Just wanted to do a first look on a new knife that we just came out with. It's called the Radford. Pretty excited about this. A little bit of backstory. Uh, we've been doing the Quay Back, uh, if you didn't already know that. Um, we've been doing that for six or seven years. Uh, it's been a long time that we've been doing that. We've come out with many different models, but for the most part, they've always been the same overall dimensions, being a uh, roughly four inch blade and 3 16 thick materials. So we've done a few slight variations of that on the Quayback, uh, but for the most part, it's always remained a very large knife, uh, very substantial. But, you know, it's slim enough that it fits in the pocket that it's always been super popular. Um, we've done really well with it. Uh, we've made several thousand of them and we're continuing to do so. Uh, you know, fast forward a couple of years, we came out with the MK Ultra model. The MK Ultra model is a two and a half inch blade with eighth inch thick materials and it sold really well for us. Uh, we've since uh, discontinued that for a while uh, until we revisit that model uh, and potentially come out with a frame lock version. Uh, but we've had a lot of interest and a lot of people telling us, hey, you know, can you come out with a middle of the road version? So we decided to come out with the Radford. The Radford is a three and a quarter inch blade with five thirty seconds thick material, which should be a excellent middle of the road ground for the guys that are not looking for a giant, heavy, robust folder like the Quayback, but also not looking for something so small that uh, you know, it's a little bit harder to manipulate if you have large hands. So the Radford is definitely splitting the difference. Yeah, with a three and a quarter inch blade, it's the perfect EDC size. We're pretty excited about this. Uh, we went through and made this knife with all of the Quayback Mark V updates. So all of the uh, very similar updates in being external stop pin, smaller lock inserts. It's got the rolling, the Hoback rolling detent, quarter inch pivot, very robust, uh, 530 seconds stop pin, and our standard pocket clip. So it has a lot of the features that everybody has always loved with a Quayback. Uh, the first run, uh, we wanted to go all the bells and whistles. So we went with an acid stone wash blade and a stone wash blade. So you'll have two versions to choose from. The frames will be faded knurl for good texture and grip, but not so aggressive that it's hard to get out of your pocket when it's clipped in with a nice robust pocket clip. And then it's also a differential anodization and finish. It's sandblasted and then it's lightly satin finished along the top and then anodized and you get purple up to bronze. That has been a really cool finish that we've done once before on our Tradecraft model, on our Switchblade version, and uh, it was well received. We've gotten a lot of kudos on that, so we have decided that we wanted to give the Radford a, a great like push into the market with something really awesome, uh, awesome finish like that. Uh, we will potentially come out with a uh, little bit more standard version, maybe a stone wash uh, with no machining or fullers. I know you guys love the fullers on the Quayback. So let me give you a rundown on some of the specifications. With a three and a quarter inch blade, it's a great size overall. Uh, it fits in the hand really well. Uh, I wear in between a medium and a large glove, uh, but I have Machinist hands, so I've got sausage fingers. It's always interesting to manipulate a knife like that. Uh, it manipulates really well for me. I like the size of this knife. It carries really well. It fits in the pocket uh, much, I, in my opinion, it fits in the pocket much better than the Quayback and the MK Ultra, just because it is, you know, that in-between size. Uh, so we went with a solid titanium backspacer uh, solid titanium frames. Uh, we do have lightning pockets on the inside of the frames. Got a couple of the as machined frames here. Um, and like I said, we have the acid stonewash blade and a stonewash version uh, as well. So for those of you that don't want the darker finish, you want a little bit more lighter finish, we have that option as well. We did all of the Quayback Mark V updates to this knife as well. So external stop pin for longer between cleanings uh, for less end user maintenance. And then we also went through with quarter inch pivot, quarter inch bearings, cage bearings. 
and then a 5.30 seconds stop pin. Uh, couple that with a 5.30 seconds thickness materials and solid backspacer, uh, the Hoback rolling detent. I think, you know, we've hit it out of the park with this one. Um, you'll see these for sale on our website and at all of our awesome dealers, so check that out. Uh, our, the website is www.jkobackknives.com. You'll see this plastered all over Instagram, Facebook, and now YouTube. Um, but I wanted to kind of give a little bit more in-depth uh, comparison to the MK Ultra and the full-size Quayback models along with uh, some specifications on the Radford itself. Uh, so let's set this awesome little custom aside of the Radford and kind of give you some in-depth comparison. So the Radford being a three and a quarter inch blade, overall length on this guy is eight inches, just about on the nose. So eight inches end to end, uh, three and a quarter inch blade. Now you compare that against the MK Ultra, it's significantly larger. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have a full-size Quayback assembled at the moment because the Mark V sold out so quickly. Uh, we did not hold anything back, and unfortunately, I didn't have one assembled at the moment. Uh, but as you can see from a frame, uh, pretty decent size difference between the two. And thickness-wise, quite a bit of difference in thickness. for the frames. As you can see, let's uh, grab two similar frames here, and thicknesses are quite a bit different. The 5 30 seconds and the 3 16 uh, it's substantial the amount of weight that you reduce going with the 5 30 seconds thickness uh, versus 3 16 It may not seem like much, but it does actually make quite a bit of difference in weight. So pretty excited about that. The differences are amazing. So going a little bit more in depth, the overall length on a Quayback with the blade being just shy of four inches, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the overall length on a Quayback is a nine and a quarter inches. So compare that against the overall length of eight inches, got a pretty significant difference in size being that that difference in blade length you know the four inches versus the three and a quarter so three quarter inch blade change but overall reduction in length itself of much more than that is pretty substantial i've been able to uh, make a few modifications to the mechanisms over the years to be able to stuff more blade within the frame so i know you guys are always like chomping at the bit to be able to get the maximum blade length for the handle uh, so pretty excited about that. There's a few other options or things that I've done to the inside as well to lighten up the knife even further than uh, what I had originally anticipated. And uh, just, you know, overall really happy with how this came out. I'm going to kind of give you guys some more uh, close-up shots of this so you can kind of get a better look of it. I know that's a little bit far away for you. But uh, just wanted to put it out there. The production will be available here in a few weeks. Uh, so, you know, look for that. And then also what you're going to want to look for is we are putting together a list, a uh, very short list because I have not been doing a lot of customs. But the custom side of the business is one that I have kind of backed off on over the last few years because of how much attention I've been putting into production. Now that we have production rolling pretty well and uh, it's a little bit more self-sustaining, uh, even though I still have my hands directly involved in everything that goes about it from design to quality control and shipping, uh, you know, and janitorial at times, um, I wanted to refocus some of my efforts on the custom side of the business, but I don't want to go crazy with it because I still don't have a great deal of time to handle that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an, a list of names uh, that I will contact you and let you know, hey, you know, this is the customs that I plan on working on. Do you want a made to order or do you want maker's choice? Uh, so I've got a couple of made to order Radfords that will be available here very shortly. Uh, this one is a Stone Age. We just got done, which is 
pretty exciting. I'll show some close-ups of this. Uh, but yeah, so if you are interested in getting a custom knife, whether that's a Quayback or a Radford or or anything for that matter, a fixed blade, or you just want something totally random, um, you'll hit me up. Worst case, I'm going to say, yeah, it's going to be a little while until I'm working on that or I'm not really interested in doing that one anymore because it's discontinued. Um, but I will get back in touch with you. So just email me direct at www.jacobacknives.com. Uh, you can hit our admin page there if you're interested in just getting on the books for it, or you can email me directly at jacobacknives at outlook.com. Uh, I will put a link down below so that you can email me direct. Uh, you can also comment on the page. You can DM me on Instagram or message me on Facebook. Uh, I'll put your name on the list. You just let me know what you're interested in and I will put you on there and I'll get in touch. Uh, I do have a little sheet that'll give you a list of options and what knife you're looking for. So really excited to do that because I'm really trying to get back to my roots of you know doing some made to order stuff, uh, getting creative and doing some maker's choice and then just doing customs. You know, that's where I started and I'm pretty excited about getting back into customs more in depth. I have been doing customs over the, the last four or five years but a lot of the time it's been maker's choice. I just make what I want to make and put it out there and people buy it up. But also the, the made to order stuff, I've noticed, I hadn't put a lot of thought into it, but the made to order stuff has been just the guys that know that I do that. And I haven't really advertised it or marketed it or anything like that. So it's just been the same awesome group of dudes that are like, hey, can you make this for me? You know, this I want a Quayback, but can you do XHP Core uh, Nichols Damascus? I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. You know, and I've been I've been doing that for those guys, but I realize I'm like, wow, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want that, but you guys don't know it because I don't really put it out there. So, just that little side snippet there. If you're interested, just shoot me an email or a message or however smoke signals. I'm good with that. So let me give you a little bit of in-depth. I'll set up the camera so that you guys can see some comparison. And hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Again, you can hit up our website at www.jacobacknives.com. You can email me direct at jakehobacknives at outlook.com. You can message us. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube we uh, are looking to build this page back up and create a whole bunch more content for you guys. I know you guys have always enjoyed that. There's going to be a ton of how-tos. Uh, we're actually going to be teaching some classes on folder making and fixed blade making over this this next year in 2020. And then we're also really going to start pumping out a lot of more cool designs in production. I may or may not always do a custom version of it. Uh, you know, sometimes it just depends on you know what time I have available for it. So really excited about that, but please make sure you subscribe, you hit the follow button, uh, you check us out on Instagram and Facebook, of course, and get on our email list. We have a ever-growing email list that we send out some really cool content to all of the guys that are on the email list, and you also occasionally will get a, uh, you know, an update on what's going to drop before most everybody else is going to see it. So, you know, make sure you guys sign up for that. So, figured I'd give you a little bit of close-up here. And what we have is, obviously, the MK Ultra Radford frame and a Quayback frame in the new Radford. So what we have here is the progression in size. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what we're working with. This is bar none to me this is the perfect size get a little bit of pan and tilt here so you can see the color change in that frame we have the faded neural finish on there. Transitions from purple up to bronze. Solid backspacer back there. 
and that acid stone wash. This is one of the prototypes, so it's hand ground. So forgive that. Yeah, I gotta get this camera to focus. There we go. Flip it over. Let's just see the lock side. Forgive it's got a couple of scratches and some fingerprints as I've been handling it for the video. Well, I sure hope you guys enjoy this. Got the custom sitting here begging for some attention. And another quick shot of the knife compared to Quayback. Something I thought was pretty interesting. And I'm not sure if you guys will nerd out over this like I do, but let me see if I can get the lighting correct. Well, doesn't look like I will. The lighting's got to be just right to be able to see this, but on the insides of the frame. They're all engraved. The blade steel on these is S90V. And I'll put up a spreadsheet on the, uh, the blade and the specifications on all the materials and everything. But all of the engravings, the year, Very hard to see this one. Maybe the custom will show up in this light. The lighting in here is not amazing. I need to get some better lights. You have PS23 and Hoback on the outside. And then, let me see if I can come around here. You can see the, that one's 2019. They will actually all be engraved 2020 on the ones that I've machined here recently. But just a cool little feature. It's really easy to read you know, when it's just on the inside of the frame. And you can see the ease of being able to clean this guy out without having to take it apart, which was what I was after with that. So hopefully you guys enjoy the content. If you do, please subscribe. And if you don't, Please don't. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoy. God bless.